Happy Wednesday, good evening, and a very warm welcome to tonight's broadcast. My name is Gloria Mutisi. Starting us off tonight, founders of some tech startups, which have expanded their portfolios beyond Rwanda, say that the Rwanda brand has helped them to seamlessly consolidate their presence in the international market. Meanwhile, the government of Rwanda seeks to increase exports of tech solution services so that they generate at least 5% of the country's gross domestic product by 2024. Ethan Tashovia starts us off tonight with this report. Uzai Sengavena is an entrepreneur who provides technology solutions to different businesses, connecting them with their customers across the country. For the last three years since he founded the tech startup called MAPA, he has had 262 clients seeking his solution that connects traders with their customers in more than 20 African countries and on other continents. <laughs> Once you have your product ready and can read and write, just like how you log into Facebook, why can't you open an online portal where you can interact with your clients without having to deal with the middlemen? Even though the online business is still small in Africa, it is steadily growing. Mugabonake Kayumba Olivier is the CEO of AD Finance, a company which provides technology services to microfinance institutions that also operates in about six African countries. He explains why Rwanda tech startups are thriving on the international market. You cannot be preferred to the local companies if they have the same similar capacities. So where we go, we target countries where we, we have uh, uh, better technology than any other of the local uh, providers. We export only when local companies are served. I think we should do also the same here and uh, see first if we have all, uh, we have given chances to our local companies before we give chances to other companies because it's the same way other countries treat ourselves. The CEO of Algorithm Limited said that after working in Rwanda and Burundi, he recently visited the Democratic Republic of Congo and Ghana to explore business opportunities and was pleased by how the brand Rwanda has earned local businesses a good reputation abroad. The advantage we are having uh, in Ghana is because we have a, a, a good ecosystem where we, we are able to test our product where uh, government institutions like uh, uh, RRA can take your product and, and use it. So when you go in Ghana, you have Ghana Revenue Authority who is interested on your, on your application. When you bring a, a software which is running, it gives you an advantage. Now, we have to see how to put together all what we have, like uh, uh, Rwanda, uh, RRDB, embassies, but the idea behind is to make sure we penetrate that market. It has to be a, a collective uh, work. In Rwanda, there are about 1,000 registered tech startups by the Rwanda Development Board, of which only 500 are fully operational. Among those, 50 startups are currently exporting their services beyond Rwanda. The target is that by 2024, there will be 80 companies to have expanded their portfolios beyond Rwanda, with an expected market value of about 100 million Rwandan francs to 20 billion Rwandan francs each. Chris Dushime from Rwanda's ICT Chamber explains how the agency is working to help those who own these tech startups to export their services beyond Rwanda. The ICT Chamber, what we are doing to uh, facilitate this kind of initiative is that we are striking strategic partnership uh, with different uh, countries with the support of uh, Rwanda Cooperation Initiative and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs through uh, economic diplomacy where we are trying to uh, tap into a uh, different market and support our companies as well to explore, uh, uh, export our opportunities. So I would say that, uh, um, uh, as you mentioned, this is a challenge, but it has also been an opportunity for uh, random companies also to, uh, to develop or to come up with solutions that will help them not uh, to flourish in, 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 in a uh, hostile environment. Meanwhile, the government of Rwanda seeks to increase exports of tech solution services so that they can generate at least 5% of the country's GDP by 2024 from the current 2% of the national GDP. Angelos Munezero, public digitization analyst at the Rwanda Ministry of ICT and Innovation, outlines the country's broad lines of assistance to those in the ICT sector. 
We've been also uh, developing some other policies such as uh, the tech enabled innovation policy as well as uh, the proof of concept uh, uh, strategy and those policies are developed to facilitate and also promote uh, the export of um, ICT services. As the ministry we're developing these policies to ensure that we facilitate uh, the export of um, uh, their solutions and we always collaborate with different uh, government institutions such as uh, the Rwanda Cooperation Initiative to see how all those countries that are visiting Rwanda to learn from us uh, how can we then be able to export uh, our services to uh, those countries. Uh, so the other thing also that we, we're working on is really to set Rwanda as a, a proof of concept uh, nation or a test base of uh, new technologies and also that um, uh, permit us to attract um, more companies to come uh, start in Rwanda, test in Rwanda and be able to scale uh, their solutions even uh, in other African uh, countries. The National Institute of Statistics recently revealed that technology grew by 29% in 2020 while many other sectors were negatively affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Reporting for RTV News, Ethan Tashobia. Rwanda Prison Services says that the number of prisoners who are under the community service TRG is still small. To date, out of the 80,000 prisoners countrywide, only 101 who have been convicted for common crimes have enrolled for the community service program and are doing so in three designated sites. We have more of this by Martina Avera. Muhazi in Rukwamagana district is one of the sites where community work for prisoners under TIG is being undertaken. Wima Namari Jose was convicted for stealing and was given three years with three million Rwandan francs fine. This was turned into six weeks of community work that will end this month. <laughs> I was fined 3 million Rwandan francs and I could not afford it, but I was happy when the government chose to give me six weeks of community work. Rwanda, through its organic law, introduced TIG. This was commonly used under the Gachacha courts. The law also states that this can be served by anyone convicted for not more than five years, where the courts can order that one serves half their sentence under this program. Senior Superintendent of Prisons, Peli Uwera Gakwaya, the RCS spokesperson, explains that this program will help decongest prisons. In prisons, it can get congested and people sit. However, this helps them to work. The numbers are still low, but we hope that this number will increase because to date, we only have 153 under this program compared to almost 80,000 prisoners. The increase will definitely help. Among those under the community service program, 100 are common offenders, while 50 account for those tried by the Gachacha courts. Many say the prosecutor's office will play a big role in the increase of numbers in the program. Martina Abera, RTV News. Now amidst the rising COVID-19 infections and deaths, the Archbishop of Kigali, Cardinal Antoine Kambanda, and the CEO of the Rwanda Governors Board, Dr. Usta Kaitesi, have called on the civil societies to join the battle against COVID-19 pandemic in Rwanda. Justine Muganeza with the details. Local residents across the country have said that civil societies and places of worship have been collaborating with the government of Rwanda in fighting COVID-19, but calls have been made to put more effort in helping vulnerable people during this difficult time, which livelihoods have been affected by the pandemic. They should put more effort in teaching about this pandemic, how to protect yourself from getting infected, teaching them about the measures in place to fight the pandemic in order to encourage others. First thing is to give them food because they're more needed than other needs and to buy community-based health insurance to those that do not have them. Private sector also says that they keep on reminding people to fight the spread. The first thing is to understand that it is our responsibility to help the government while practicing the measures in place, especially in markets. We respect the percentage required, where to stand, where to wash hands from, which would help in fighting this pandemic, starting from the business owners. 
we inform them that COVID-19 has got negative effects, but when it reaches to the economy, it gets worse. Civil society spokesperson Dr. Joseph Murunzi Zadjaya have said that collaboration with government authorities is needed to inform local residents about the severity and negative effects of COVID-19. We as civil society will try to support the government so that we see how residents would understand why they should protect themselves as well understanding their role in fighting this pandemic. Another thing we need to do is to work together and teach residents the reason as to why they are supposed to protect themselves. They shouldn't be afraid of the police on the road. They should be afraid of COVID-19. They should also know that this pandemic can negatively affect the country's economy and that if there is a problem in health services, even security services will be affected. Rwanda Governance Board CEO Dr. Yusta Kaitesi and Archbishop of Kigali Antoine Cardinal Kambanda have called on the civil societies to join the battle against COVID-19 pandemic in Rwanda. That role was recognized in the beginning, but improvement is needed today. The first thing we request civil society and places of worship is to approach Rwandans they work for or work with so that they won't lack anything. Second thing is to give them hope so that they may not be consumed by sickness. Third is to remind residents that it requires collaboration as well as taking responsibility of protecting themselves and others because of the fact that the battle is for all of us. Whatever thing a person can do, he does it because he's alive. We should respect that gift of God and preserve it. That is why on our side we help people to understand the value of life and the severity of this pandemic. We collaborate with the government so that the people would keep on respecting the measures in place. We encourage people to understand that it is their responsibility to respect their lives, protecting themselves from getting infected or infecting others to avoid death. People share what they have so that there will be no death. More than 15,000 people infected with COVID-19 are receiving home-based care, including vulnerable people who hardly can afford basic supplies without going to work. That is according to Rwanda's Ministry of Health. Chislaine Mugwaneza, RTV News. Now, Rwandan communities residing along the borders have been criticized for continuing to disregard COVID-19 prevention guidelines, citing that this is the root cause of the high number of COVID-19 infections. Now, local government authorities acknowledge that the measures that were put in place will have tangible results in the coming days. Unchanging public attitude, including activities of smugglers who cross the border illegally, not wearing face masks appropriately, and other poor perceptions from the public, are some of the main reasons outlined for the continued increase of COVID-19 infections. <laughs> People in our cell are afraid to go to hospital these days because they don't want to be tested. Even those with symptoms like cough or headache don't go to hospital. And that should be looked into. The other thing that needs to be done is to test everyone and know who is sick or not. The other challenge is that the patients under the home-based quarantine violate it and go out and infect others. <laughs> I think why there's an increase in infections is because people have been complacent. For instance, the youth around here are always saying that COVID-19 is a disease for the rich. They should know better and wear their face masks and sanitize. There are some roadblocks and security patrols that were put in roads in this district that operate night and day to prevent those that cross borders illegally. However, this seems to be challenging because even then there are other people who use other ways and risk infecting their colleagues. There are some people that we had that escaped from us and they were transporting local brew. When they escape, as you also know the COVID-19 situation in Uganda, they spread the virus to others. When they escape though, we talk to the responsible people and they are put in isolation. 
Health authorities in Jichumbi district acknowledge that people's attitude towards COVID-19 is still negative, hence the increase in infections. <laughs> Based on our analysis of the high number of infections, it stems from the poor perception by the residents about COVID-19, who haven't fully understood the importance of protecting themselves against the virus. But there are also some other people that dodge the security authorities and cross the borders illegally and spread the virus. Jichumbi District Mayor Dayambaje Felix says that the measures that were put in place to fight the spread of the pandemic will produce tangible results in the coming days. We took time and made an analysis and reformed two reasons for the increase in numbers. Jichumbi District is a district neighboring the border but also one that's near Kigali City. Smugglers that cross the border spread the virus. And we made this analysis in sectors near the border, or what we would call the hotspots. We involved the public and security organs to support them, and we believe we shall see the results. And it's what we did across all the hotspots. We also came up with new strategies to follow up on patients under the home-based quarantine. It involves everyone from the private sector, religious leaders, and everyone else. <laughs> Based on statistics from the Ministry of Health, in this month of July, Jichumbi District is among the districts with high numbers of infections, especially in the sectors of Rubaya, Chumba, Kaninga and Rushachi. And in other news, some parents have expressed concerns about the behavior of some young people, including students who have recently returned back from home, ret returned back to home rather from school that have been flaunting COVID-19 preventive measures. It's while health authorities and security officials are calling upon the young people to be vigilant because of the severity of the pandemic. Gabi Muvuni now reports. In various entertainment venues, spotting young people and children is quite the normal sight. With students back home from school, a good number are back and busy in these spots. However, they're showing no adherence to the COVID-19 preventive measures. Some parents say... This behavior is worrying because it can lead to the spread of the pandemic. Some students are visiting each other, and yet this goes against the COVID-19 preventive measures. Here at Rafiki, they are always going to play basketball together, and also going to other places where there is a field to go play football. These students seem to be unaware of the current pandemic. They sit close to each other with no sense of social distancing between them. I urge them to protect themselves because if they don't, it will affect all of us. Sometimes you ask them, why aren't you wearing your mask properly? And they respond, it is not me who brought corona. And also, I cannot climb this hill while wearing the mask. Some of the youth that do not go to school have reportedly been the leading group of young people who have been flaunting health guidelines set up to control the spread of COVID-19. They say it is important to wear my mask in the presence of other people around me. But now I'm alone. I shall wear it when I get to an area with many people. We know about this pandemic. It is talked about all over the world. But I don't know anyone who got infected, but I'm aware it is infectious. One of the students says that he understands the effects of the ongoing pandemic and the preventive measures because they were highlighted in school. At school they told us we have to stay home and help our parents with housework and we should avoid unnecessary movements. The Rwanda National Police spokesperson, CP John Bosco Cabrera, urges the youth to comply with the COVID-19 preventive measures. The first thing is they should protect themselves. That way they will protect others. Following the preventive measures is not difficult. They are well educated, therefore they should take the lead. The Minister of State in charge of primary health in the Ministry of Health says the youth should change the perception of the pandemic because anyone can get infected. 
For a person who had a strong immune system, this virus has come and unfortunately killed them and others as well. For example, the other day we lost a five-day-old baby. Now in the daily death toll, figures before were cases of people in their 70s, 80s, but now we had some who were in the 30s, 34, and even 20. This is a sign that the virus is severe and can affect anyone. There have been 44,279 infections and 491 coronavirus-related deaths reported in the country since the pandemic began. Gabi Muvunyi for RTV. We will leave it at that for today. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Enjoy the rest of the programming. Of course, not forgetting to remind you to do all that's required of you to stop the spread of the pandemic. Otherwise, God bless you and keep you. And until next time, I'm Gloria Mutisi. Bye for now.